is now the ultimate power in the universe. At last, we will reveal ourselves. You are now the means to our cable is now. Four, three, two, one. Hello there. Hello, all you Star Wars nerds and far, far away family. Welcome back to another episode of Lightsaber Radio. We're going to be talking Bad Batch. Hollow Net News and Rumors, and Charlie's Impossible Quiz. How we doing, everybody? What's happening? We're good. Oh, wow. No enthusiasm. <laughs> uh, listeners, you got to forgive some of them, uh, some of the people. <laughs> they didn't stop drinking until like two hours ago and hadn't really been to bed yet, and it's like six in the morning some places. You know. CJ, you good, dude? Yeah, I'm all good. I'm just enjoying the weather over here, all humid and gross and fun. <laughs> there you go. G-Money, how you be, brother? Okay, the reason I drank so much last night is because you're getting married sad. Weeks, my, we know. Uh, yeah, my wife said we couldn't. Wa- she couldn't walk down the aisle to the Imperial Death March, so uh, I just uh, had to drink my pain away. Yeah. Sad times. Sad times. <laughs> Why the Imperial March though? I told you, just convince her to have a secondary ceremony on the show. Just bring her on the show. Charlie can marry y'all. <laughs> on we'll the show. live stream it. We'll live stream it. Yeah, it'll be it'll be great. Yes, Just do yes. it on your honeymoon. Be, you it'll can, be, you it'll be better than the real thing. Watch, you'll see. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. I hope whoa. you don't listen to this one. Oh, you better oh, apologize. Whoa. You gotta apologize. Just chill, oh, no. chill. It's a joke. It's a joke. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm that's sorry. Funny. That's funny. <laughs> what happened so, to Garrison? I don't know. He was sleeping in the shed the last I heard. He didn't get no Wi Fi signal out there. He, he, he didn't even get the doghouse. He got all the way out in the shed. Oh, that's. He's got to get a signal booster. <laughs> to even try to watch Netflix or anything. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we love you, you see Garrison. the last Bad Batch episode? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. All no, your friends uh, is on there talking stuff nothing. about me. You can't be on that show no more. <laughs> yeah, Gar- Garrison has said nothing but nice things about his future wife. So you better let, tell let, your let little friends. You she's out. fantastic. <laughs> she's there awesome. You. So only thing I'd have to say is she's a Harry Potter fan and we're Star Wars fans. So Ooh. Harry Potter's just a knockoff of Star Wars in my eyes. So that's okay. Yeah, I like Harry Potter, man. <laughs> All the more was crazy. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It was that TikTok that guy was talking about. Okay, it. before we get, well, before Potter. we get into our rundown, Voldemort versus Vader. Who wins? Vader. 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 There you go. Now, 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 all the Harry Potter fans are gonna say Voldemort. Voldemort, Voldemort. couldn't even take over a high school. yes love it love it oh okay so quick on the bad batch the show this week was called infested but i really think the title should have been this is not a negotiation clone force 99 have become full-on mercenaries try to help out sid after being guilted yet again by omega go who wants first Okay, you got to get off this guilt trip thing. That's not guilt trip. She's right, though. We ain't like she would. All she states is facts. <laughs> but they, she but, 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 but CF ninety nine has spent eight episodes trying to get from under Sid's thumb, and Omega is putting them right back in that compromising position. Well, Omega is not all her now. They just doing stuff for money now. You heard it here first on Lightsaber Radio. Mark has a problem with a child. <laughs> Anti-children. Hey, hey. hey yeah. You, you, you got it. I have a problem with manipulative children. That happened to be right. Oh, you got to admit, she has them Every wrapped around her is. They all manipulate. Oh, oh uh, they, yeah. Garrison, you said it correct. They have, they're absolutely wrapped around her finger for sure. But as a dad of a uh, of a young woman, there are worse things in life than doing things because your girl wants. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that Aww. on there. Hey, and it's, now, it's true. Now, tell me this. I think this was one of the best parts. <laughs> I can cut oh, that out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, when the pipes come in and they start telling that they have to keep Omega, we're keeping a little girl with us. How fast the Bad Batch pulled out their weapons was, was brilliant. That's oh, so fast. I was like, y'all, you I, I jumped like, holy shit, that was fast. <laughs> like, I promise you this, they care more about Omega than they, any one of them care about each other. I guarantee that, especially Hunter. That's a true story, but that's why I think that the title should have been This is Not a Negotiation mm-hmm. versus Infested. Because the Pike said at least three times, this is not a negotiation. 
my only problem with the episode was this this is going to be the longest series 16 episodes and more filler episodes than non-filler episodes in the whole series i'm just gonna say it. i, I, I want to speak to that right there where you're just saying the last three episodes it feels like should have been in the first part kind of the development of the characters and things of that nature and then the ramp up with intensity and things of that nature because we're three episodes away from the season finale and there's zero tie-ups we don't know what's going to happen with um, we don't know what's going to happen with Crosshair. We don't know what's going to happen with Empire, Camino, the Bounty Hunters. Nothing has been tied up yet, which leads me to believe that there will be a season two because nothing has been there wrapped up. There has to be a season two. Even Resistance had more than one season. Every animation series that Dave Filoni has ever done has had at least a season two. Most of them are season three, four, five, six, and then if you're the Clone Wars, you get 29. <laughs> well, that's right. Enjoy the Clone Wars, no matter what you say. <laughs> I think the Clone Wars is the best Star Wars that there is. I think it's better than all the movies. Well, uh, Charlie, what, what are you thinking there? Hey, the Clone Wars was dope. Oh, I ain't going to argue. <laughs> I ain't going to argue at all. I agree. Charlie, what you got? Okay, so one of the first, I really, really enjoyed the episode. I know you guys are sat here saying that it's a filler episode and it's this and it's that. I really enjoyed Garrison and I did not say that. But Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't say I didn't like him. I'm waiting for Garrison to agree, though. I know he's going to. I saw you him know nodding. Me so I well. Saw... <laughs> um, I the first sort of couple of shots of um that we see in the episode, it really, really reminded me of Star Wars Underworld. Um, and for the fans who don't know, it was a proposed TV series quite a long time ago, before anything happened with Disney and Lucasfilm, and we had a couple of sort of proto shots, a kind of pilot, um, some concept art. There were some real visual similarities there. And I'm, I, I think what this is a reach. This is a reach. I'm going off on a bit of a tangent. During the Disney and Lucasfilm merger, there were 300 approved scripts that were passed over from George to Disney. A lot of those were for Star Wars Underworld. And I think what we're seeing now with Bad Batch is an expression of some of those ideas that haven't yet been used. And I think that's really, really exciting. I may just be talking out of my bum. I don't know. So, so are they going to contract Kate Beckinsale to uh, play in the series? Garrison, what do you think? I have no idea. Probably not. Oh, I, 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 was just, I was transitioning from Charlie to you. My God. That's a, I, I transitioned that was a with funny. moment. That was awesome. That was a great oh. fun moment. Oh, my word. Okay, Garrison, what you got, bro? Okay, so, yeah, CJ, you know me pretty well. I thought it was a filler episode. And then, like, I... Like, Charlie's good at seeing the good in everything. I'll give her that. Like, she's yeah, the Omega of. Wait, we're close yeah, for Santa, and she's Omega. I'll take that's, that. that's, that's it. That's I'll probably take a good that. one. That's I'll probably a good it. one. I'll take she's that. really. She, she's the least critical, and then you got me, who's like the most critical. Like, oh, you're if any one of us would be crosshair, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm pretty crosshair on this one. <laughs> and, and, um, and, and can we all agree that Kyle will be Tarkin? Okay, we're supposed to be Clone Force 99, right. not, the, not the Imperials. <laughs> well, but remember, he hates equally. Can we make him cross here? I think Garrison. I think Garrison's more of a tech. Honestly, I think he's oh my more. Gosh. I think Gar he's more Gar tech. Garrison, continue on with your point, though. That, that's funny. <laughs> no, I just. I, I thought it was kind of a filler episode. I was missing a lot of. I don't know. I feel like. I feel like it wasn't going anywhere. I feel like it didn't like. It was like a good episode by itself. I didn't feel like it contributed to the overall like progression of the season. Yeah. And when when you say like. Oh flip! There's only three episodes left till the season finale. I'm like, wait, what? That do that doesn't seem like a like coming down to the home stretch episode. You know what I mean? That scares me. Like, but that also like gives me hope because what's going to be in these next three episodes? Because they got to pack something in to get a big bang for the season finale. Do, does he like get the feeling like I do that in order for us to kind of get Bad Batch in a linear ish timeline, they're they're going to have to do what Disney did for Clone Wars and post a you should watch it in this order pipe deal yeah uh, um I, I, I just get that feeling i'm so. gonna be really really interested to see how they're gonna tie it up because as much as these episodes are fun ruby deserves more screen time 10 out of 10 for ruby uh where do i get one i want one 10 to 1 galaxy's <laughs> edge is gonna drop one i Give swear me a cuddly one that oh, i can feed oh, popcorn to i agree take my money take my money take my money exactly Keep, uh, keep that yeah, in mind. Stuff there. the bad batch. Just give me an episode dedicated to Ruby. That's all I want. Charlie, do you have a pet? You can. That, there's your next. Uh, Weirdly enough, your next idea. I have a dog called Ruby. <laughs> so there you go. And everybody That's goes great. quiet with what the hell? Conveniency. No, the crazy <laughs> thing is, 
This is the crazy thing. She's had her dog for a while named Ruby before this ever came out. I did. See? That very out of force works. Star Wars. I yeah. influenced the Star Wars universe. That's what's happening here. Yeah. I'm writing the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, okay, we can go down that rabbit hole, but we probably don't want to. It is confirmed, though, that there will be 16 episodes. It was just released. The dates, Disney just released the dates of episode 15, which is going to be August 6th. Episode 16, probably on 13 August, because people in the UK write their dates backwards. But uh, the season will, will have 60 not. episodes. <laughs> so, Kyle, I think that you, you glitched out on us there for a second. We were yeah, saying that there's nothing being drop. tied up and that we were trying to say, okay, uh, most likely a season two. What other takeaways did you personally have from this episode? Well, like I said earlier, I think that it has, you see how much that they care about Omega all Clone Force 99. They just really care about Omega. And to the point that even though Wrecker is scared of heights, which is just, he like, if you fail, you're like made of stone. I don't think you would die. You know, been shot twice, you know, beat up a uh, rancor. I don't think you're, you're going to die. You know what I'm saying? But he's scared of heights. And he was quick to jump on that thing and go down. And he didn't show the scared of heights thing. And I don't know why Dave well, they, put they, that they, out they there like that. They did for a slight second. They did for a slight second. But that was before they took it. And then when it was coming up and all the stuff was coming, all the, all the infestation of the, whatever the, <sighs> the stupid insect things was called, yes. when they were coming up, they kind of showed it again, but at that point, he's fighting off these things too and trying to hold on to this crate of spice. So I think that there's a reason that he's, I think they were, he was trying to, to draw you in to the point of how much they care about Omega in this episode. I think that is something that is that they was really trying to point out in that episode. I think that's what the episode was really about to show you how much they care about Omega. And they're like, they care about her a lot because they was all willing to, to drop dead right then against the pike. That's fair. That's fair. Okay, Charlie, are okay. you supporting or rebutting what Kyle's saying? I absolutely support it. I, I really enjoy the kind of very subtle points of character building that's going on. Something else I also really loved with, even though the bugs were disgusting and it made me feel really itchy, um, I really, I, again, I don't know too much about Clone Wars. I still need to do some catching up, but I really liked the kind of horror elements in this episode. There was some really nice tension building. There were some really kind of spooky sort of heart racing. Oh God, are they going to make it out of their moments? And I think that was a really nice turn for what we've seen so far as kind of just a kid's show. I don't say that critically in the slightest, but yeah, it was, I really enjoyed that kind of I'm gonna go over to CJ in one second, but I, I want to interject one thing right there. The whole heart racing thing, didn't it feel kind of like Indiana Jones-ish? Yes, yes, that's exactly one of my other points. There's so many wonderful references to Indiana Jones, like the mine carts and, oh. Fair enough, fair enough. CJ, what are you thinking, brother? My favorite part of that whole thing is when they're going down to get the spice and the infestation of those hideous creatures comes up and Hunter checks on Wrecker and Wrecker screams like the biggest girl to get him out of there. That is like, I'm sorry, I'm a huge Wrecker fan, but that right there just, I started cracking up. He's like, get me out of here! Like, just, just. Why is everybody hating on these bugs? Because they just look like lighter skinned Geonosians almost. Uh, yeah, we don't like this. the Geonosians. Geonosians are disgusting though. <laughs> Uh, the Geonosian hate on LSR, damn. But the thing is, if we didn't have if we didn't have the Geonosians, then we wouldn't have the awesomeness that was Luke Skywalker blowing up Death Star One at Obi Wan's behest. So hey, I don't say I hate the Geonosians. I just say they were disgusting looking. Well, I, I, I just can't imagine talk like waking them. up next to one of those in the morning and looking <laughs> well, over. Whoa, 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 Charlie, save us here. Save us. Um, no, I was going to say, uh, there's also a moment where Wrecker comes up from rescuing the spice and he's, he's covered in bug guts. Mm. Nobody pays any attention to him and you just hear him very quietly go, I'm okay, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. And I, it, re it just really cracked me up. It made me laugh so much. <laughs> Did you guys notice that Charlie was the only one that noticed the bug guts all over him? That's that, that, that got to be a woman thing right there, because no, I, I noticed it. I, just, I noticed I it. Didn't it. Didn't it. Didn't all y'all lying, y'all didn't know. No, 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 with, with everybody saying, <laughs> "Oh my gosh, they're so disgusting," and it's it's like green and yellow goo, and oh, I just wasn't gonna say anything. That gorgeous weathered clone armor covered in bug guts, <laughs> disgusting. There you go. Oh, okay, so in other words, well, it was Indiana Jones mixed with Starship Troopers. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> 
was fair enough. Fair enough. Now, did anybody, speaking of kind of background things, did anybody notice? Did it, it not look like the Pikes bartender, not the Pikes, but the Deveronians bartender was maybe of the Chiss ish species without the red eyes? I did notice that. That is one thing I did yeah. notice. I was like, is this dude blue? Is that a he, chiss? He, he was blue, but he had like tribal markings, but he didn't have the Chiss red eyes. So I'm wondering, I, I've never seen that species before. We, we have other blue species. We have the Duros, we have the Chiss. I know there's one other, but I've never seen one that's a humanoid blue. Anybody? I don't know. Maybe he's like a, a mix. Yeah, see, I, I see, I, 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 I see where Harrison's but... coming from with that. <laughs> okay. Maybe he's like half something, half something else. Fair enough. Fair enough. Speaking of, um, I'm so sorry, Mark. Speaking of interesting characters, um, the the guy, I can't remember his name, the green guy with the horns. Someone the Deveronian? The Deveronian, yeah. Um, I don't know if that species has turned up before, like in yeah. animated or live action, but it made me think of does anybody remember in the cantina scene in A New Hope, there's a man in a devil mask because they were scrambling for anything they could get their hands on from the prop department. He's and a rich and made... Deveronian, yes. Yes. Well, yeah. now, did, did you watch Rebels, Charlie? Bits. Okay. Bits and pieces. When, whenever they're in Tarkin Town and the Rebels are trying to go back and forth, one of the armed smugglers that they're getting weapon supplies from, he's a Deveronian. Hey, we should do that. I'm with it. Dude, when we go when we go live, we should have watch parties and watch all of the Clone Wars. I'm down. Well, I'm uh, well down. So, well, so let's see here. So we got 11 movies to watch, seven seasons of Clone Wars, four seasons of Rebels, two seasons of Resistance, <laughs> at least one season of Clone we got Wars enough 99. content for the next 10 years. And a partridge and a pear tree. <laughs> <laughs> so the war, war, uh, Warriors, Warriors, uh, yeah, Warriors. W R O O N I A N S. That's that's the other blue species that don't have red eyes. Fair enough. Ah. Uh. Okay. Thank you, fandom Wikipedia. Woohoo! Shout outs to the Wikipedias. So did, nobody's really saying anything about the Deveronian criminal that took over Sid's parlor. Any thoughts there? I've heard his mom's name uh, or that family name before. I just couldn't put my hand on where I heard it from. I don't know if it was in one of the books or if it was brought up in the Clone Wars or in Resistance or, or one of them, but I've heard that name before, the name of the uh, of his mom or the, of the family. Right. I've heard well, that name before. Well, Charlie was going crazy there, but she forgot she was muted. What are you thinking? Um, I... <sighs> So right at the end, when Omega kneels down in front of him and asks him if he's okay, she she seems to have this inclination to see the kindness in people when others are instantly there to be able to say that they're bad. This man's obviously a criminal, has a criminal family, yet she sees the good in him. She blames it on Ruby. I think I'm going to take this and run with it. I'm going to take it as another example of her showing potential for sensitivity. It's a feeling, a feeling that there's good in someone above the bad and the negative things that they've done. So why does she turn into Phasma then? I'm joking. CJ, what are you thinking, brother? I'm going to throw this back out there from the second, sometimes first episode. I think we talked about it on both. I, I don't think she's just a Django clone. I think she's got some Palpatine. I'm not going to lie. She's got the mannerisms. She's like, she, come on, the hair? Django, like there's not a lot of clones with blonde hair. But she's got some Palpatine hair going on. And she's got the, the definitely hair. something going on. Definitely. I'm I'm just saying, like it's. I know. I know. I'm gonna get some backlash, but I'm serious. Like if she's I got some. I support you, man. I support. Oh, I appreciate. I, I, I appreciate I'm, I'm, I'm there for it because we've been saying from episode one that she is displaying some type of at least uber consciousness, and like what Charlie's saying, there is some type of extreme empathy she sees a good in everybody and that could be just because it's the the innocence of a child but there and again i mean of course it's her Star defect Wars. they're all defective that's it's defect. not being defective to be <laughs> nice that's a defect just because you hate on everything defect. being nice is not <laughs> defective it's kyle it's a defect it's a what, defect. what do you think kyle she's gonna meet job in the hood and say i can see the good in him there's no good in him at all <laughs> gonna get killed. Why you keep thinking all these the evil ass people are good people? That's a defect. You can't think evil people are good people. They're just evil. I think it's forced sensitivity, like Charlie said. I think it's tapping into seeing like the the spiritual essence of somebody's heart. I think she's tapping into that with the force, and we oh. haven't really got like think about it. Like you just said. She could meet Java and probably find a way to be like, yeah, he's he's a he's a nice person. He's a nice alien. No, he is not. Stop it. That man was 
trying to kill Sid and take over. No, knock it off. Uh, Bad. Wow, wow. Charlie, what, what do you got to her about there? I think it's the same with Hera. It's this idea that it's it's this feeling. For her, flying isn't knowledge. It's a feeling. It's this, this idea that's been bouncing around in Bad Batch about feeling. And we know from across the films that when people don't know how to describe the Force, it's a feeling. Fair enough. Even in the seeds are being planted. The breadcrumbs are being laid. We just have to follow the trail. Fair enough. Well, as soon as Luke comes and gets her, then we we'll all know. Yeah, there yeah, you go. There Garrison, we go. Garrison, what are you thinking, dude? Lose my mind if that or, or instead of, like, looking through the forest, here's my other view. She's like Charlie, where she just sees the good in everything. Like, Aww. at heart, Omega is just a cute, sweet, innocent little girl. That guilts everybody into doing the right thing. (laughs) Right. She's that perspective that Disney needs. You know, she's the perfect Disney princess. (laughs) Oh, wow. Yes. Yes. You heard it here first. You heard it first. first. The next Disney princess is going to be Omega. I agree with that. (laughs) (laughs) Garrison, that is extremely just prescient there because they're always looking for new characters to be the faces of their franchise. I like that idea. And I think Kyle's on board. Hey, I, I, I have a feeling that he'll soon here pretty soon that uh, Lou Skywalker is going to come pick up Garrison because I think he's got some <laughs> force sensibility because he just be having these awesome thoughts about this shit that nobody else in the world would ever think. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> so we, we, is there anything See. else that anybody's thinking on Bad Batch? Because I know we have a ton of news and rumors to get to today. I think that's all I had. I just, right. I just yeah. seen that they're leading up to something and they're building that anticipation. That's why they have the, all these filler episodes. They're building up to something big. And I think that the final episode of The Bad Batch is going to be freaking spectacular. I, hear I really you. do. I'm I here for it's it. It's going to be spectacular. I think it's going to have all these different characters all come together to help get The Bad Batch out of a situation because of Omega. Or, or, or to up, go to their funeral. She's, she's setting why? up. Why? She is setting up and she's building alliances. A lot of people are thinking about force sensitivity, her trait and her extra or her whatever, her extra ability is being able to statistically look at a situation and all she has been doing is getting friends. Every single one of these episodes, she has created a new friend, new allies, and she is strategically building up because the Bad Batch, and y'all can quote me on this, so when the last episode comes out, y'all can say, oh, great, Kyle was wrong if I was wrong, but I'm gonna tell you right now what's gonna happen. The Bad Batch is going to get captured. When they get captured, Omega's gonna call up all these people that she showed compassion to and helped out, and they are all gonna come and rescue the Bad Batch. So how the hell is Ruby going to help the Bad Batch? How the hell is Ruby going to help out the Bad Batch? <laughs> we have seen this. This is this is classic Dave Filoni right here. This is what he does. He always builds up. I guarantee you in the next episode or episode 15, they're going to get captured. It's going to be a one hour season finale. And that one hour season finale is going to be everybody joining together to come rescue the Bad Batch. Fair enough. Think and I think they're going to take uh, what the hell's his name? Damn kill shot. Whatever the hell the sniper dude his name is. I can't Crosshair. 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 Sure. <laughs> how are you? How are you? How are you, how are you a bad batch fan and not know Crosshair? I bro. can't remember his damn name. Right? I'm bad with name. But uh, anyway, and that's when they're going to. That, and I, I have a feeling either Crosshair is going to be in there helping, or they're going to capture uh, him then. And in the beginning of season two is when they're going to remove his chip. I guarantee that that's what's going to happen. CJ, you got the last word on this, brother. I'm going to be honest, I agree with Kyle. I feel like with everything Omega's been doing with like the people that they've encountered, where she's like seeing the good in them, I feel like they're going to get captured uh, by Crosshair. Omega's going to somehow escape some way, shape, or form because she's crafty and she, well, is being trained by the Bad Batch themselves. <laughs> and she's going to get every person that she saw the light in, the good side, the, the wholeheartedness that she has, she's going to get them and be like, look, my brothers were taken. They let you go. They helped you out. They made sure you were good. Help us out and let, or help me out and get my brothers back. You heard and it. You're it's crazy. It's gonna, you know, it would really be crazy if like at the end, like Hunter, would you know what happened? But Hunter sacrifices himself to save Omega. That's how she escapes. But Crosshair helps her escape. He starts feeling guilty. The chip don't work or something like that. Helps her escape, and then they, them two together, go rally everybody to come help their brothers. I think that what would be, be crazy. Think about it. Think about it. We, the Hera left, right? We got Kanan in episode one. Just imagine the Ghost crew making their first appearance 
Too early, Either at brother, the end of the season. Too early. Well, hold, on, too hold on. Well, come on. Maybe come here on. in Canaan, but I don't know about uh, Zeb and um. Copper and Sabine. Maybe, maybe, maybe and Zeb. Sabine. They might find Zeb in between that. Yeah, time it might be frame. Sabine too, because you got to think about Sabine is. Well, no, nah, she'd be really young. Yeah, yeah, yeah she'd be, yeah. be like young. one or two. But yeah. I think, I mean, see, hey, Mandalorians yeah. is hard. You know, they might be killing people at two. We don't know. But but you never, you never, right? yeah. Okay. 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 Part of my wow. Okay. So wow. <laughs> okay. On that one, she I think we'll probably need to What's progress. Up? I think on that one, we'll, we'll need to progress. But you heard it here first. Everybody's in agreement that there's going to be a great buildup and that Omega's going to be the Mon Mothma of the Bad Batch and pull everybody together to help save their sorry hides. Yeah, sounds great, Mothma. sounds great. It is now, <laughs> it is now time for Hollow Net News and Rumors. Who wants in first? Okay, I think I've got a, a CJ in first. What you got, dude? He was ready. <laughs> Hasbro, Hasbro has been on fire this week. They just dropped a new line of ha- uh, Mandalorian toys. So they are ca- they're, they're called the Carbonite series. They look sick. And what we're getting out of that is a a battle worn scout trooper. I don't know if it's the scout trooper from season one where they're having that decent little conversation on the speeder bikes with Grogu in that bag, or it's just a version of it. it I'm excited. Uh, the Shore Trooper from season two, and we're going to get the heavy infantry guy from season one. And I am so excited for that toy. Yes. I am Everybody, so excited uh, for I know that, that we're an audio medium, but if CJ smiles any greater, his face is going to break. He's from ear to ear. He Hold on, I'm not Joker. even... He looks I'm like the Joker even, right now. Yeah, he, I'm not even going to be the next Joker, yes. So I'm a huge Mandalorian fan, right? But no. I'm also a huge Sabrak fan. And what we're getting out of this is a Knight's Brother Warrior. They're dropping that toy. And I lost my mind when I saw that. We're going to get a Dathomirian male warrior toy. Other than Darth Maul. I already have Darth Maul. I need more. We can make I some want. sick customs. Well, so, yes. so, so, so is it yes. is it uh, is it just a random death of Myriad or is it going to be Savage it's, Press? Are no, they going to put him in Mandalorian random, armor? I mean, what's up? I believe it's just a random death, uh, death of Myriad warrior. Uh, from what I saw, it's literally just a shirtless with pants, light color, uh, light colored skin, like not the red, but kind of like Savage's color with a big battle axe, four sided battle was axe. yellow, bro. Well, yeah. Just saying, just saying. I did like his character, but that I, was just I, I, I think that his character could have been more fleshed out, but that's a topic for another episode. But also <laughs> on top of that, we're getting Galen Urso. Eh. Uh, nice. Eh. Yeah, I wasn't really excited about that. There's some eh. other people, but it's just another toy. I, 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 I would rather have Krennic than Urso, but that's just me. Uh, we're getting right. Admiral Rampart from the Bad Batch. Oh, Ooh. War Mantle Boy. Yep. Uh, Speaking of, that's the next episode, War Mantle. <laughs> yep, Antok Merrick. I don't know if anybody knows who that is. We're getting Merrick? Cool. Yep. Right. And we're getting Q90. If anybody knows who Q90 is, he is a part of the original trilogy. He is a bounty hunter, and he showed up in Empire Strikes Back when Darth Vader rounds up all of those beautiful bounty hunters. Oh, he, he's the other droid besides IG-88. Yep. Got and you. we're getting that one. And I am extremely excited about that. Cool deal. Cool deal. That is all I've got on the beautiful Hasbro toys. Okay. Well, let's see here. It looks like that Garrison was wanting to say something. You got something there, G-Money, or we want to move on? Oh, you're good. No. Uh, okay. All right. Charlie, you're, you're so, on your head. I don't have too much in the way of news, uh, except regarding my... So if anybody knows me, the people who know me in real life, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi is my all-time, other than Rey, my all-time favorite Jedi. And I'm so, so excited for the Kenobi series, and there has been a huge amount of casting news released, including... This is a possibility, and maybe it hasn't necessarily been... For the listeners, her eyes just went as if she bit into the best piece of chocolate. Oh, I am so excited for this. This hasn't necessarily been confirmed, but they have potentially cast a Princess Leia, a young Princess Leia, and it seems to be the idea that um, she will be quite a big part of the series, and it will be potentially uh, Vivian Lyra Blair, who some of you will most likely know from Netflix's hit film Bird Box. She is absolutely adorable, so wouldn't melt. 
I think she's a perfect choice if it ends up being true. I think CJ has a bunch more casting stuff because this is not the only piece of news. Go, 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 whoa, go. Whoa, 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 one second, CJ. I, I want to say something right there to the layer. As far as the whole storyline behind Kenobi, I've been racking my brains about the only thing that could really get Kenobi off of Tatooine, watching over Luke, and that would be if Leia's in danger or something happens to Bail or things of that nature, mm -hmm. maybe with some Inquisitors from Rebels, things like that. So just want to drop that in. What you I got, have, Sage? I have something on that Inquisitor fact. Sun King, as we all yeah. know, he played, in, he played in the Fast and Furious franchise. <laughs> he was Han. <laughs> he <laughs> is supposedly casted as the fifth brother, supposedly. From what we know and from what Mark and I talked about early on before we started the podcast, I believe it was Mark and I talking about this, yes. Charlie. He went on Rotten Tomatoes and was talking about seeing a bunch of Jedi. For what? Well, no, 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 no. Uh, let, let's be very specific what he said. Okay, it wasn't Jedi. This. He said Jedi's and seeing Darth Vader walking around while he's so, sitting in his chair. The biggest thing is, is if you guys don't believe he's going to be in this show, how do you like? How do you not believe it? You don't just randomly go on Rotten Tomatoes and just talk about that. I'm sorry. I, I think it's going to happen. But we do know that Lucasfilm and Disney is all about that misdirection. They could give him a hundred cages to sit there and like paint by numbers. But I don't think so. Absolutely. Also, Tamara Morrison has been confirmed. This has been confirmed that he is coming back as Commander Cody, and we yeah. may possibly get a flashback Ooh. of Rex. If you, you got Tamara Morrison, it's not hard to throw him in a blue armor after throwing him in a. I want armor. him in there as fives, daggone it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to think about it too. The Kenobi series, the timeline that the Kenobi series is, is in, Rex could be in it, Ahsoka could be in it. You know, there's a lot of people that could be it. And plus, there's going to have to be other Jedi in there if, if Vader and is going to kill the rest of the surviving Jedi. You know, all the Jedi didn't get killed in Order 66. We only know of and was only shown in the Clone Wars and at the beginning of the Bad Batch, there's like thousands of Jedis at this time. There's no way that they could have killed them all. And that's the whole, that's always been the premise. And that's the whole reason of the Inquisitors to hunt down the remaining Jedi. Yep. So we knew that that was going to happen within the Kenobi series. And for him to say that, we know. And then for Rex to show up in the episode, come on, Rex is all the way around in Rebels. You know what I'm saying? So we he, know that he, Rex- He's a the Jedi. I also have one more thing I gotta say. What, 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 one quick thing. Garrison, you look like you had a thought there, brother. Yeah, for this Kenobi series, I just have two, like, please, 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 two requests. Okay, one, the the Sung Kang guy, he's always snacking in Fast and Furious. Like, every scene he's in, he's always putting something in his mouth. He needs to be eating. Okay, he needs to be snacking in the Star Wars. I don't care what he's eating. <laughs> that's, 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 number one. That. that's number one. G g give, me, give him some <laughs> Mantel mix. <laughs> so, number two. Number two. I want to see Darth Vader, you know, like in Rogue One, how he just walks down the hallway just slaughtering Ooh. people. Now I want to see him do the same thing, but with Jedis. I just want to see him just cutting through Jedis like paper. No, we saw, so that. We saw that in Revenge of the Sith whenever he walked into the temple. From... He cut out a bunch uh, of Jedi. Yeah. We didn't see it. Enough. We did. I want to see Darth Vader. Think about he killed this. kids. He didn't kill the Jedi. I want to see, see more kids die. I want to see. Whoa. Whoa. Hold on. I got one more casting announcement. All right, CJ, go what, for it, brother. Hold on, hold on. What, what oh. do y'all think about this? What do y'all think about this? In Revenge of the Sith, when Anakin walks in and starts just killing all the Jedi in the temple, that's the Skywalker. Anakin is what are we that, gonna do? Shit. Anakin couldn't even whip Obi Wan Kenobi's ass. So how the hell did he go into the Jedi Temple and wipe out a hundred thousand Jedi in there? Well, he had Anakin thirty thousand five hundred first. He had the, he had like thirty thousand strong in the five hundred first. He didn't do anything but kill kids. I'm sorry, the five hundred first did it. You get uh, a firing squad. You can only dodge so many blasts with the lightsaber. Ma Master Kyle, they're coming for us. What are we going to do, CJ? What else oh. you got, dude? R2 and 3PO are coming back. They're uh, confirmed for Kenobi. We're going to get R2 and 3PO. And that was my last little bit of Kenobi was, I'm sorry, I'm excited to see R2. I will never end that. I would love to see R2 and 3PO with Leia, a young Leia, just as a kind of like a little scene where R2 is kind of popping off and being, well, you know, R2 himself <laughs> and 3PO trying to teach etiquette, proper etiquette, 
to a young Leia. Because Leia oh, oh, and, and, and she's she the odds of everything. But <laughs> Mr. Mr. Yes. Leia, Mr. Leia, the odds of you sneaking out and not getting caught are proper, appropriately. And R2 just like, like leading the way. Right. R2 just opens the door and leads the way, like, shut up, Freepio. Let's go, Leia. Charlie, what you thinking? <laughs> Okay, so moving on from Obi-Wan, I know this is this was a little controversial in the last couple of episodes. There's been a bunch of casting announcements for Andor, and I'll be honest, I'm super excited. We've got Diego Luna, who was obviously in Rogue One. We've got Stellan Skarsgård, who's one of my favorite actors. Absolutely. I love the, I love yeah. the entire Skarsgård family. I think they're fantastic. Um, I know they're trying to get Jimmy Smith to come back as Bail Organa. They are. Is that confirmed? No, I don't think it's been confirmed. Oh, I think it's I don't see. Rumors. I don't see why he wouldn't, though. I don't see why he wouldn't. They would have to do a lot of CG on him because he's pretty old now. <laughs> but that and he's pretty tatted up. Like he's got some tattoos on him now too. And obviously, he's Forrest Whitaker. Clothes, so excited. <laughs> he is the perfect Saw Guerrero. He really he is. Really is. Come there's on. also um, there's also quite a few sort of unknown younger actors from sort of like British television and British programs, which is brilliant. More, more. It's British the BBC Invasion. It is the BBC invasion yes. already. What is that? Why is all the actors in Star Wars from, from British Columbia or I mean from, from Okay, the, that's the in UK. Canada, brother. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> from, from Britain. Why well, is everybody Because like eighty like, percent of the stuff is being filmed in Britain American right now? And actors and COVID's are going now on. So we can't get no good I'm gonna be honest, I feel Wars. like I'm just gonna say of course, this, of course, a lot of take American, over of Star Wars. Of course a lot of American actors are overpaid and they can't really act their way of a wet paper bag. I mean, that's true. So, I mean, I'd rather go with somebody that can actually play a part. So, hey, if they can do and, it, rock know, off. I just, that, and I think British people just sound more sophisticated when they do an Thanks. acting role. Yeah, I, that's retarded asses. You know, we all sound like a bunch of idiots. So <laughs> only one person that sounds good on here is Charlie. She's the only one that talks with proper etiquette. Even the school teacher out there be saying some slang words. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so true, though. Or, or, or I, 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 if that's the case there, I shall be entirely proper and I shall do the rest of this episode speaking like Charlie. Please don't. Is, please is that what you like? No, no. No. Come on, Even man. Charlie's like, don't, don't. Don't get don't. me spicy! <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have any? Oh, uh, CJ, didn't you have something on the Ahsoka? Yes, I do. And I am very unhappy with one Custom, and overly Custom. aesthetic with another. So I'm going to start with obviously the happiest thing because I, I don't like being pessimistic right out the gate. Um, Admiral Thrawn has been casted by, or has been casted, obviously, if anybody knows or watches Legend. Rebels and knows the voice actor, Lars Mikkelsen. I hope I did not butcher his last name. And you didn't. He, You're good. Okay, cool. You're good. He is voicing Thrawn and he has been casted as Thrawn. I am... I'm excited about that. I'm so ecstatic. Be because he, he did a perfect fraud in Rebels. Oh, yes. He really did. Oh, yeah. And he looks like him. They literally, like, yeah. put his face and kind of de aged, uh, like, you know, de aged it and threw blue and red on it and all that fun stuff. It's just great, beautiful, beautiful casting. All right. But now, as, now, now Ezra, take us down in the dumps. Put us in the garbage compactor. So oh. they casted Ezra. Uh, and I am not happy. I'm so not happy about this. Don't get me wrong. The actor's great, but. When I say this name and you look him up, you're gonna see what he's been in. Mina Masat. Anybody know what he's he, been he, part he, of? He's a good actor. I just don't think he's right for yeah. this part. Garrison, what 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 movie did you play in? A lot of movies. A whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, that was impressive. Well, yeah. Done. Well done. Yeah. So the biggest yeah. thing with that, though, the biggest reason why I'm not happy about that is because Garrison just proved my point. There you go. When Garrison, you look at you're Ezra, like you're going to see Aladdin. You're going to see Aladdin. And that's the thing with Star Wars. You don't want associations. You want it to be separate. Disney well, has its own entity. Now, 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 if Sabine starts singing, um, what is that song? Street Rat? I'm out. <laughs> Garrison, what do you think, dude? I, I don't know. I'm not super, like, worried about it. And I know... I'm usually the guy super pessimistic, but I don't know. I'm not. You're playing devil's I'm advocate. See how he does. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe, hey, Garrison, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe I'm not pessimistic. Actor. Maybe I just like being devil's advocate. Maybe that's it. <laughs> All right, Kyle, what are you thinking, dude? Well, two other, not people that's cast, but two other Star Wars people that we know from the past that is said they might be showing up in Ahsoka that kind of brought my attention because one of them I thought was dead, but so now I don't understand if he's going to be a force ghost or what. 
but General Pong Corrales <clears throat> should be having an appearance in Ahsoka, and then our good friend Barris is supposed to be having a cameo in Ahsoka. It was that, Barris is got, going to have to be a flashback. Though. I could go oh, back. Barris, they don't. It never shows Barris dying. Remember, she was arrested and taken away. Now I could have swore General the General Pong or Pong or whatever Pong Corral. I, I could have swore he got killed, but I was like, all right. But Bears didn't ever die. They well, took it, her it, away. It was it was implied that she was taken away, and it was kind of heavily implied that all Jedi, well, most of the Jedi died, died during Order sixty six. So that's but she wasn't a Jedi. So why would they? So kill? hey, Kyle, I looked it up. Well, but but, but they were also right after Ahsoka. And Ahsoka Pong. wasn't a Jedi. So no. What do you say, J- CJ? So Kyle is right with the whole assuming that Paul and Krell's dead. Yeah, he was Dogma shot him in the back of the head. That's what I thought. Clone I'm Wars. like, so he must be coming back as a force ghost. Or, I hope because I don't like him in person. I, I don't like understand him. that I because like I thought him. that I thought once you turned to the dark side, you couldn't be a force ghost no more. I thought that that was implied in 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 the movies and in Rebels and in in the Clone Wars that if you died, you couldn't come back as a force ghost. That's a Jedi thing. That's a light side thing not a dark side thing. So I don't know. We'll have to see. Maybe it's just a voice. Although, although if you think about it in episode nine, I am all the Sith. They've, got, so they've got some connection there. But he wasn't dead yet. They, just because you're all the Sith, that means the Sith was, are, are within you. You know what I'm saying? He basically, he was saying, I have all the power of the dark side within. Me. That's uh, what he was stating. At. And when she said, I have all the Jedi, I am all the Jedi, the Jedi can be force ghosts. So they can pop up and you can hear their voices. We don't know if you can hear Sith voices, What you think about it even in, in cause technically Bane was a a, a, a force ghost or a, a whatever he was to Yoda when Yoda was on his little adventure in, in the Clone Wars. So it, it's that, like, that, that might've been a manifestation whenever he was trying to do that whole Jedi purge walker. I'm sorry, I think Bane is the most powerful. So I think he would have that ability to figure that out. My uh, personal opinion, that's my personal opinion that's, here. That's well, you would think point. that there would be a time that the, the original Sith Emperor, what's his face um, variant or whatever, he would have been able to do it. That dude destroyed it. He sucked the force out of an entire planet. So you talking about strength of the force, you know, that dude was doper than anybody. That's fair. That's you know, fair. but Bane had, he was the only Sith and Xana. That was it. It was just Bane and Xana. So like, like I've, like I've explained before, the force is based like, sort of like the dark side anyway, is based on sort of like a, um, or battery. even the light side, it's like a battery. The more people that sucking the energy out of the battery, the less strength there is in it. So at that point, Bane could have been strong, but I don't know. I, that's just the only time that there's ever been a dark side force presence or ghost or anything that's been shown in anything. Now, in the on the light side, there's been a whole bunch of them. You had, you know, shit. Qui Gon, Obi Wan, yeah. Yoda, Mark that, Ham. I mean, that's uh, fair. I, I know. I know that there's going to be more stuff being written about things. Charlie, you look like you had something to say there. So, speaking of strength in the Force um, and people sticking around, Mark Hamill once again being the big troll that he is. Oh, wow, Jonas, that one. Oh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. uh, it turns out he's been secretly appearing in every Star Wars movie since 2015, and that includes voice cameos in Solo, Rogue One, and the sequel and the prequel films. And Mandalor and the Mandalorian. And he was yes, in the Mandalorian. He was the bartender. Yes. He I'm so happy leave. with him. So, he will never leave. <laughs> that, 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 that he is a, Star Wars. That was, a great, that was a great episode or a great appearance of him on The Tonight Show. So, yes, well done. Well done. Sorry, but he's just, um, he, he is Star Wars. He is the he living is embodiment of Star Wars. Okay, so Kyle showed me a picture that I had not seen yet. And mm-hmm. I about oh. lost my oh. gore. Does anybody yes. want to talk about Grogu? Me. CJ. <laughs> so a couple of days ago, a beautiful po- two posters were dropped, but everybody's losing their mind over this one poster. The other one, uh, me being a Mandalorian fan, I lost my mind over that one more than Grogu. But there's a photo of Grogu using the Force to build his lightsaber while Luke is holding a yeller, yellow, yeller, yeller. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well done. A hey, well done. Well done. Whoa, 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 whoa. I. I did not pick that up. I did not pick up no. on the fact he's building his lightsaber. Yeah, he's using the well right over some, but he literally is using the force to build his little lightsaber, his oh. little little mini lightsaber. Oh. And Luke's like, would you hurry up? 
you little bitty lot thing. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, Luke may be smiling, but you know he's got that, like, come on, kid. This is like the fourth time you've done this. Okay, like, well, my question is, is, is he going to have or be developing his jumping, twisting, trapezo- trapezery, Jedi lightsaber fighting skills, bouncing off walls, cutting off Dooku's. I mean, is he going to be worse that way? Or is he going to be more of the, oh. I'm sorry, he is the child of a Mandalorian in my eyes. He's going to be violent as hell. He is going to be Yoda. (laughs) Come on, guys. Garrison, you've been kind of quiet here, dude. What are you thinking, man? (laughs) Well, I don't know. He might not necessarily be like, he might choose a different lightsaber form. You never know. I was, either way though, I was pumped. But I feel like he's. Yeah, I. That's a good point. (laughs) But I feel like he's. Am I the only one who feels like he's kind of young to have a lightsaber? I mean, I'm all for like Second (laughs) Amendment, give him weapons. But he still is like a little kid. I I don't know. (laughs) He might be just now. I read an article. You cut um, your little ear off. <laughs> I read an article and they were stating we don't know like the real like time span. You know how some kids, you know, they hit two and they just yeah. boom, they know everything. And other kids <laughs> hit two and they don't know shit. So he could be fifty. He might age real slow until he's fifty, and then the the progression of aging could speed up. We don't know because mm-hmm. we don't know shit about Yoda's species. We don't know nothing about Grogu's species. No, I want some Yaddle backstory myself. Yes, that's just me. Yaddle, more yes. for Yaddle. So now to be bringing up to to go back to the poster thing. There's also another poster that captivated me. It's the new Mandalorian poster, yes. and it has the Mandalorian. He's holding the dark saber, but in his other hand, he is holding Grogu. So we know that in season three, that Luke. And Grogu is going to be together at a point and the Mandalorian is going to get back together. Din and Grogu is going to get back together sometime in the thing because these are the posters for the movies. Theory! Theory! For theory! The theory! I, oh, I, held it, I held it in! Theory! Crossover, or at least in the canon timeline, Mando is going to rescue Grogu because Ben Solo, a.k.a. That's Kylo not Ren, happening. attacks the Jedi yeah. Temple. No! And Grogu no. is no. no. for Mando. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is way off on that. There's two. No. The timeline is way off on that. That would that you got to understand. By the, the during the Mandalorian, the uh, well, is like no the, thing though, the, thing though is, is, the thing though is is where uh, Mando is five years after Endor, uh, the Battle of Endor. Who's not to say that the next season couldn't be a ten year jump? We don't know. But that's, that's my possible. theory. That's the only way that Grogu could wind back up like Mando. That old. doesn't explain the dark saber mm-hmm. series that him and Bo Katan have to do. That doesn't explain that yet. I don't okay, think that, that I think that, that, that could be been episodes uh, one through, hope one of through everybody. four, and then Grogu gets rescued in five through eight. You can have time series jumps. I mean, we have flashbacks. Why not flash forwards? No, no, that's forwards. possible. I just I don't think so. Nope. Yeah. If you, think about you it, you can, if you think about it, you can find these two posters. If Grogu's old enough to have a lightsaber, he's old enough to walk himself. Why is he still being carried? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes. Oh, Thank wow. you, Garrison, for pointing that out. Oh, well, the, the thing is, he, he, he was walking whenever he was getting off the ship and things like that. It just takes him half a day to go 100 yards. Well, he was walking to be a crappy little evil tall. child. <laughs> exactly. I mean, he's, if he's a foot tall, tall. His, legs are, his legs may be three inches tall. So you figure how long a stride that is. Anyway, anything else on the Grogu? Uh, uh, other I, I, than, I, other than a beautiful, beautiful depiction of a young Luke Skywalker showing a child how to use the Force and become a Jedi and make a lightsaber, I think that is probably the most excitement I have had other than like the Hasbro stuff I dropped. <laughs> we will, that, uh, Lightsaber Radio, we will be posting the uh, the season three poster of Mando with the dark saber and Grogu on the socials later today. So please check that out. So what do you I, think is amazing? What do you think his lightsaber is going to look like? Because I, you see like the influence. So like Obi Wan's first lightsaber, you could see the Qui Gon influence, and then you can see Anakin or uh, excuse me, Luke's lightsaber. You can see Obi Wan's influence on Luke's lightsaber. You know what I mean? I, How they not always, but a lot of times they kind of have an influence. I see. I see Luke going? just letting him do his thing, let him build. I think he's collected parts and stuff that he has found. Come on, Luke's been traveling, and if you guys have oh, played yeah. Battlefront Two, he went to that nice little little place. In Battlefront 2 and found this one artifact, which if you watch The Last Jedi, 
it's in that scene when he's talking to Ray in his shack. So I feel like he might have went to that little Sith area and picked up lightsaber parts or has been traveling and found lightsaber parts and let Grogu be like, grab what you want. Let's see if it'll work and just let him do his own thing. Fair enough. Well, plus you see that. Well, and and, and we've all, and we've already distinguished. But if this is the if, if he's floating, if Luke is in the picture, Luke is kind of floating a kyber crystal in his hand, and it's yellow. So that's uh, that's the second point in time that we don't seen a yellow lightsaber. Ray's lightsaber is yellow. Now Grogu's lightsaber is yellow. Yeah. So the, these yellow lightsabers is popping up a lot. Are is is that maybe something that the reason that we have an issue with Ben because. At when Luke was training um, Grogu, and then as he trained Ray, was he training them in the balance of the Force, or was he training them in light and dark? See, most descriptions of the yellow Kyber crystals imply that it it's a it's a sentinel position. It's eradication of the dark side, removal of everything evil within the Force. Yeah, yeah, guardianship, protection of the Force. So, oh, it's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> If, if nobody has anything else, I do have two quick snippets to get to before Charlie kicks our tail today. Anybody got anything? I think that's it. Okay, to the two quick snippets. The Comic-Con at home is going on currently, and yesterday they had a High Republic panel of the authors. Good stuff. If you get a chance to, go check it out. They dropped a couple new names of upcoming books. Another book is going to be coming out the 1st of September, so we're getting more High Republic stuff, good stuff. But Comic-Con at Home is going on right now, if anybody wants to check that out. Secondly, and finally, as far as I know for news and rumors, August 25th, the Disney Gallery is dropping a show that is the making of season two of The Mandalorian, kind of a behind the scenes, seeing how the sausage is made. That is going to be dope! (laughs) Is it, is it like galleries? Is it, yes. Is yeah, it, it, it's, it's supposed to be a gallery. The galleries was dope. When they yeah, they, it, 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 it's thing. Star Wars That's galleries, but they, but they're, it's doing the making of episode two of The Mandalorian. Siege. So I've also read up on this. They're not going to show anything about Mark Hamill coming as Luke Skywalker. That was confirmed, which I'm bummed out about. They're doing that special. They're going to do another drop just for that episode yeah. alone, which... I'm okay with that. I wouldn't mind sitting there for an hour watching everybody tear up behind the scenes, watching Mark Hamill walk in with his original Return of the Jedi robe. They, the the actors that, sit, that saw that happen, they said it was much akin to the actors in episode five, Empire Strikes Back, finding out that Vader was Luke's father, just the shock and awe and the, oh my God moment. I still like Harrison Ford's reaction that Mark Hamill does on on an interview. Indeed. Hey, no, kid, I, you didn't tell me anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, does he, uh, let's see here. Does anybody have anything else? Because we had a lot of news and stuff to get, uh, we got through today. Anything else for anybody? Oh. Okay. All righty. I have a <laughs> phone. That, uh, uh, CJ, uh, CJ is looking scared. Charlie is moving around because she knows what's getting ready to happen. It is Let's time for. It. I don't like that smile on your face, Charlie. Yeah, I don't like I'm this. Scared. I don't like this. I'm ready. Nope. I'm ready. Charlie's impossible win. Oh, all right. right, Charlie. What was the name of the title character in Journal of the Wills, George's original outline for Star Wars? Mark. R two D two. No. It was it was his recounting of. Okay. Anybody? I, can I say a guess? I'm just gonna say Luke Starkiller. Yep. Just yes. Uh, no. No, it, it, she, it, she's saying yes that you can. She, she was saying yes that you can make a guess. Oh man! Oh, damn. I was so happy. That was I was like, so yeah. funny, dude. Uh, Darth Vader. <laughs> No. That hurt. That really so hurt. the answer, I can't stop laughing at this. The answer is Mace Windy. Mace Windy. Yeah. <laughs> well, were they in Chicago? Windy when he was flying out the window. Well, uh, uh, were, were they in Chicago? <laughs> oh, why? Why? <laughs> what have I done? Mace Windy. What have I done? Wow. <laughs> the next question. Uh, what? What year was the first Star Wars celebration held? <gasps> Bonus points if you can tell me the state it was held in. CJ? Uh, 2012 in Anaheim. It was in no. California. No. No. I thought it was in- oh. no. no. Both of those? No. no. Mark? I think it was 1978 in Missouri. No. 
2001, Chicago, Illinois. No! Really? Okay, you guys 2008, are so close. Florida. The first Star Wars celebration that was titled Star Wars Celebration 1 was held in 1999 in Denver, Colorado. Oh, I should have known. I lived in Denver then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, is, what is the name of Grand Moff Tarkin's Star Destroyer? Oh, uh, yeah. Why do I... What? Mark? Uh, is it the Admonitor? No. Good guess. That was my guess. That's what I was thinking too. So we were all. You guys can have a clue. It begins with an E. Enforcer. No. Executor. Oh God, you're Mark. You're so close. Radicator. Yeah, no executor. Okay, now no. you're just throwing out names. Man. Yeah, I am. <laughs> it's um, it's titled the. <laughs> no, it's titled the Executrix. Wow. Okay. Well, of course, Tarkin's got something Exec- like that. Executor was Vader's superstar destroyer at yeah, six. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Well, five okay. and six. I expect somebody to know this because this is like super nerd knowledge. Across all nine films, how many hands get cut off? Kyle? Three. No. Mark? Nine. Oh. No. Garrison? No. Nine. Close. No. Uh, CJ? Eleven. Close. No. What? Uh, am I missing one? I just counted up. How many? Missing. Kyle, no Googling. I'm not Googling then. I'm counting all my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I just did that. I was like, okay. How many, Charlie? 12. 12? Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, who am I missing? Zam Wessel, Anakin times three, Dooku times two, Grievous yep. times two, Windu, uh, uh, Ponda Baba, Wampa, and Luke. Wait, when did Hey, the one off? dude in the, in, in, in the cantina, all we want chops off his whole arm. That don't count as one. Yeah, that don't count. Oh, I was oh, right. Oh, I was oh, right. Oh, oh. Bye bye. Mace Windu didn't have his hand cut off. Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he, he, did. did. he had his hand cut, cut off, off and then he was kicked and out of the window. I thought, he, I thought it was at the right. shoulder. I wasn't counting nah. that. No, nah, he got his hand cut off. He no, cut off. I, I, wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't counting oh. the arm by Obi Wan. Yeah, I it's right. arm I'm don't count. It's an arm I, attached I, to the hand. I don't I, the, the, the I'm arbiter having none of this. Spoken. <laughs> none of this. Who holds the record for the most hands removed? Oh, Anything. um, no. Garrison? Obi Wan. Yes. It's Obi Wan. Well done. Yes. Grievous. Oh, well, Obi Wan. Yes. What are you guys talking about? Oh, how many times? No, he cut off, off the most hands. Yeah. yeah. Obi-Wan has the record for removing the most hands. I didn't raise hands. my hand fast well, I was well, like, that's I, I, I'm just curious. Is he getting credit for cutting uh, Anakin's all three limbs or just the arm for that? I'm just curious. Just the hands. Just the okay. arms. Just the hands. Okay. Okay. Who, you got Garrison, credits. I'm so proud of you. Well done. He's got who, a point. Who did Senator Palpatine replace to become the head of the Galactic Senate? <gasps> Mark. Uh, Chancellor Valorum. Yes. Finally. Uh, First good. point in three weeks. Yes. <laughs> Gonna go pointless. You've only got you've only got three more. Three more, three more. What was the name of the group of younglings we meet in the prequels? They had a name. The group of them together had a name. They did. And I'm trying to think. It was the one that Caleb Doom was a part of. Five. Four. Three. No? The Bear Clan. Bear Clan? Yeah, they were called the Bear Clan. I forgot. Well done. This that, is that's beyond my knowledge right there. Yeah, that was that, that, yeah. I, I, I told you it's an impossible well quiz. What company manufactured C three PO? Hasbro. Mark? <laughs> I, <don't have. laughs> hey, I know that no. you uh, No, uh that actually is no company manufactured him and it can build him. See, no, that's what I thought. Behind. But there was a company that built the original parts that Anakin mm-hmm. then assembled. Okay. Fair enough. Anybody? No? So uh, Cybot Galactica. Cybot Galactica. Okay. Oh, then. Wow. This okay. last one is absolutely wild, and I'm going to lose my mind if anybody gets it. Everybody What's get your Yoda? Googles ready. What's Yoda's first name? <gasps> oh, Kyle. Kyle's got this. Master. No. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Um, they no. talked about, oh, it was it was an original concept uh, concept because George was going to talk about uh, mm-hmm. you know, um, something Yoda. Oh, uh, why? Uh, what? Uh, no, 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 no. Mitch Yoda. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. no, no. Uh, actually, M- Minch is in there somewhere. It's... No. I'm in. I'm so mad. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. Um, I'm going to give you a clue. Uh, the name is also used in a very popular, like, 90s TV series. Really, really popular with teenagers. Um, vampires. No, nope. Buffy. That one. 
Yes. No. Yes. Buffy Yoda. Wait a minute. What I the hell? Buffy Yoda. I was going to say like Edward. Yoda. Buffy, Buffy Yoda. Yoda. And I cheated. I looked online and, and y'all are wrong. It says Mitch Yoda right here. That's what I thought. Why did you cheat it too? Mitch. But, but Buffy? Buffy Yoda. According, <laughs> according to Could you imagine Scott Yoda being all super buff? Okay. <laughs> right. No, 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 no. No, no, because originally in the original outline, it was Buffy, but then it was changed by Lee Brackett, who wrote the screenplay. She changed it to Minch Yoda, and it was later shortened to Yoda. How many more questions you got there, Charlie? I'm done now. We're okay, done. So the, char- so the score was Charlie six, <laughs> Garrison and I won, CJ and Kyle saying, what the hell? Yeah. I didn't you know guys that. got I a got question now. So hey, that was my first point in three weeks. I'm just happy. Well done, everybody. Well I done. I ask everybody no, a question. Actually, well done, Charlie. You're, you're, you're pulling stuff out of the garbage compactor. Um, I wish great. to shout out that uh, it was my boyfriend who wrote most of the questions for this week. Oh, shout out, boyfriend. Well done, boyfriend. Thank hey, you, tell Nick. him I don't like him no more because he made me look <laughs> like an idiot. Yeah, but I don't like you anymore. I'm sorry. Uh, CJ, what are you thinking, dude? I got a question to ask everybody. Okay. Me being a huge Mandalorian fan, I got a Mandalorian question to ask everybody. What is the weakest? Well, no, stop it. (laughs) (laughs) No, stop it. What is the weakest thing on a Mandalorian's armor? His brain. No. Um, I would argue their neck. No, 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 no. It's it's a part of the armor. It's not a part of the body. The crotch cover. Why? <laughs> What's in your immediate thought? I actually, well, Kyle, get you to Chest find plate, out the gutter, brother. And what, what, would it be the joints? No, 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 no. You guys, you guys are nowhere near. It's on the backside. The back of the helmet. No. Yeah, it's got, I thought it'd be the neck. Yeah, the stitching. The stitching on the No, I said nothing, nothing on the body. Not that, not, it's literal armor. It's a part of the armor. The jet pack? There you go. But not all think, Mandalorians have a jet pack, though. But think about it. Uh, if everything's made out of Beskar, how can a lightsaber do that to a? Uh, how many? Uh, okay, catch it. Hold on. Let me let me throw this out there. How many times do we see a Jedi or somebody with a lightsaber or a blaster or well, Obi Wan hands uh, steel fists? I guess you could say, uh-huh. punch and break a a, a, a jetpack and they die. So many times. Punch a jet. Well, hey. Huh. Well, I'm in the sorry, Mandalorian, got some still in the Mandalorian when Din gets shot in the back of the head because because of the stitching, because you know they got stitching that goes up the back of the helmet. That's yeah. how they pull the helmet together in the back. So that stitching when he got shot in the back of the head right there, that he almost died. So you would have to say that that's kind of weak right there because it's just basically. Well, stitching. if everything's made out of Beskar, well, how I'm, I'm guessing that is there's the, a difference the jetpack between almost a problem. dead and actually dead. Just a second. But how is the if the jetpacks are made out of Beskar, just like the rest of the armor, how is the jetpack getting sliced, shot, and then, you know, these guys... It's got an explosive fuel in it! It, 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 it can't be made out of Beskar, then. That's what I'm saying. So that's I the weakest part. question next episode. Wow, wow. That, 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 that could very well quit be asking Charlie time. hard questions that nobody knows the answer because then she just makes it tougher the next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I enjoy it. I, no, see, that is that is my rebuttal to throw back out. Okay, we're all sadistic week, yeah. nerds. <laughs> That's all it is. That's all it is. So let's see here. We've covered a bunch of news. We got our butts handed to us. Talked about Bad Batch. Does anything, anybody have anything bugging their brains? Because I have one thing, but it's going to be at the end. Anybody? I nope. do. All right, I wanna, so I'm gonna go back Kyle, to the Mandalorian. Kyle's good. G Money, you good? <laughs> Charlie, you good, ma'am? I'm good. Go for it, CJ. <laughs> I want to go back to the poster in the Mandalor and the lightsaber thing. So we're talking about time lapses. This has been bugging me since you said it, Mark. Um, I don't want a time lapse personally. I wouldn't mind one, but I don't want one. You got the dark saber. They pulled up Mandalore. Bo Katan's talking about Mandalore. All these things. I want to see another siege of Mandalore. I, want I don't to see think another. it's going to happen. I think that's what everybody wanted, but I don't think that that's what's going to happen. I, I really think that, that it's going to have something to do with Luke. I think they're going to have Luke in, this, in the next season a lot more. Now that they know that they can pull it off, I think they're going to have him in there a lot more. And I think that Grogu is going to come back, and then I think it's going to be the three of them doing a lot of scenes in the next season of The Mandalorian. I don't think that the that, that Bo-Katan and them is going to be... I think they're going to be in it, but I don't think it's going to be a lot. And well, it could be her, that Luke is helping them get back Mandalore. Well, her, her main focus, though, her main focus was to get that so she can get Mandalore back. With that, every Mandalorian will flood to her, like she said. And even in the Clone Wars, she said, that lightsaber unifies Mandalore. 
and will bring everybody back to Mandalore. All the way up to the point that, that Bobo gets uh, Mandalore's helmet and then the dark saber goes bye-bye because the Mandalore's helmet is- It's well, over powerful. Like yeah, that, it, that, whoever, he's the king. He is the ruler of all Mandalore. Well, yeah, and that's the biggest go. thing. Like, I would love to see that too. I'd love to see that would Bobo be dope get that. To see that. Oh yeah, I would lose my mind. I'm a huge Boba Fett fan and Mandalorian fan. I would love to see Boba Fett Mandalore. I would love to see Boba Fett Mandalore. We know by the books, if, if they go by the books, which I don't think that the books are considered ca- considered canon, but you know everything. But we know legend. we know Kevin Feige and Dave Filoni are very, very, very in tune with the the, 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 legacy. the, stu- the legacy, legacy stuff, and you you see a lot of those nods, even with Dave so, Filoni in the uh, Clone Wars. So. so I think that. I think that they might be, I think that the book of Boba Fett should lead up to that, to him finding the helmet and finding out about his daughter and all that different stuff. So yeah, Din Djarin versus there. Boba Fett for the Mandalorian crown and what happens? I want to see Bo-Katan whoop Din's ass to take back the Darksaber. That's what I want. And then Boba Fett be like, <laughs> I got the helmet, that lightsaber ain't crap. That's Welcome it. to my kingdom. Yeah, on Tatooine instead of Mandalore. No, no, Mandalore. <laughs> on Mandalore. I want Mandalore back. But Mandalore's half destroyed. Oh, mercy. That's There's crazy. a whole galaxy. There's a Mandalorian sector. There's more than one planet. Mandalore is the planet, then they have the moon, then they have so several you have a couple planets. of planets in the system. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's a whole system. You can make any of them Mandalore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you what's can just the name? restart. I mean, what, what, what's in the name? Seriously. So. <laughs> Any, anybody have anything else? Because we could talk about Mandalorian stuff for another two hours, and I believe that Charlie's starting to get a little hungry. Oh. Slave one! <laughs> Slave one! <laughs> Slave one! Okay. Hold on, I, hold on. I specifically did not do that. I did Slave not do one. it. You can't. Oh, oh, oh. Slave one! Oh my gosh. No, it's not. It's got too much blue in it. <laughs> hey, hey, this is from Attack of the Clones. You you were struggling this whole episode. I, I was. I I, tri- I, I said you. I did so I said you good. Got five times. I Kyle, you got five Kyle times said, mouth, Kyle said, said to me yesterday. It's just now getting sad whenever you do Slave One. I refrain. <laughs> Who brought it in? <laughs> me. You Joker, you. <laughs> yes. Damn it, man. He's so happy right now. <laughs> well done, Kyle. Well done. <laughs> well, I do have one one piece of thing, and then we'll get out of here and. Everybody go about their weekend and weeks. First and foremost, thank everybody for listening to Ep- uh, Lightsaber Radio. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, hit us up. And that leads to my final piece of news. Next weekend, next show, we will be having a guest. Ooh. He is a huge Star Wars fan. He is a, a fan of other stuff as well, but we talk Star Wars here, unless it's talking about space bugs. But anyway, and his name <laughs> is Jordan. He is a huge Boba Fett guy. He will probably be coming in the Zoom wearing his Mandalorian helmet, so that's going to make Charlie smile. Garrison Hi. is just going to be like, I, I hate you. A- I, Garrison's going to say, I hate you because I don't have the helmet. Kyle's just going to sit back and <laughs> cheese and go, say what? And it's just going to be <laughs> awesome. That's going to be next episode. If he's so, going to wear his Mandalorian helmet, I think we all vote on Charlie dressing up as Ray for the whole episode. Okay. I have my pilot helmet. Okay. There you go. There you no, go. No, I'll play. I'll play. You can, you can do that once we go live. Then you can start dressing up as Ray. We'll, we'll introduce you as Ray and everything. It, Ray is well, on the set. And, and, and I'll put on some face paint since I wear an eye patch. I'll, uh, I'll be the little Jedi with the ears, master of what's going uh, Yeah! Uh, yeah! <laughs> yeah, I'm not, we, we, we can pull that off. I'd, I'd have to shave my beard. Oh, I don't know about shaving my beard. Hey, whoa. Hey, everybody get their cosplay together and we'll all do a, we're going to do a live show in cosplay. Uh, actually, you know what? That could be our kickoff show. Anyway, yeah, we're, we're going to do that on the kickoff show. That'll be great because I'll that dress will be up amazing. in All right. So I got my whole costume, so I, I, I'm i ready. I know Charlie got hers. Garrison, who you going to be? In the dog oh, no, house. You have to be Chewbacca. Out. You're going to be Chewbacca. Oh, you know how hot you going to be being Chewbacca the whole episode? <laughs> <laughs> slave layer. Chewbacca in the closet. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Okay, there you that, go. That, that, that can go many different places. On that, thank everyone to, uh, for listening to Lightsaber Radio. Hit us up on our socials. Try out Charlie's Impossible Quiz. If you want to be a guest, come hang out with us. Be uber, uber Star Wars nerds. We'd love to have you. Have an amazing weekend. And everyone, everybody here in the pod, everybody that's listening, may the force be with you. 
Thank you for tuning into LSR. If you enjoyed the show, consider subscribing so you can be notified when new episodes are released. If you would like to be a guest on the show or just want to give us some feedback, feel free to email us. You can also reach out to us on all major social media platforms. They're linked in the show notes below. Lightsaber Radio is produced by Pick Film Media and is a Sway cast original, starring Charlie Harwood, Garrison Turcott, CJ Elliott, and Carl McDaniel. And don't forget to join us next time for more adventures in a galaxy far, far away.